Surya Namaskar is all set to reach its peak as the Indian Space Research Organization will place Aditya L1 into its final orbit on the 6th of January. The point is around 1.5 million kilometers away. Around 4 p.m. on Saturday, Aditya L1 is expected to begin the process of entering its final orbit. It will join four, four operational probes, three of which belong to NASA. A final decision will be taken by ISRO on whether to use the liquid Apogee engine or other thrusters to put Aditya L1 into its final orbit based on the spacecraft's position on Saturday. The orbital period is approximately 178 days. Remember, Aditya L1's journey can be broadly divided into two phases. Phase 1, reaching the Lagrange point or L1 point, and Phase 2, maintaining its orbit around this point. L1, remember, is a unique location in space where the gravitational forces of the Earth and the Sun balance out, making it an ideal spot for observing solar phenomena. However, reaching and staying in that orbit around L1 is a complex task. Aditya L1, remember, was launched on the 2nd of September last year and began its journey to its final destination on the 18th of September. In its 126-day journey so far, Aditya L1 has traversed about 3.7 million kilometers. So far, Aditya L1 has carried out two major maneuvers, one on the 19th of September and another one on the 6th of October. It carries seven instruments to study the sun and solar storms with a planned five-year mission. Now, to help us better understand what's going to be happening, I'm joined by Manish Purohit on the broadcast. He's a former ISRO scientist. Manish Purohit, good evening. Namaskar. Thank you very much for speaking with us on Mirror Now. Uh, it is a big day tomorrow. It is an exciting day uh, for ISRO. But help us understand what exactly is going to be happening. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a big day tomorrow. It's going to be like a day that we have already witnessed. A Chandrayaan-3 moment for year 2024, we can say that we are going to witness something similar to those lines. See, what exactly is going to happen at that particular moment on 6th of January, 4 p.m. is something that we have already witnessed when we were planning our Mangalyaan. So, Mangalyaan mission was supposed to reach Martian orbit, and then we successfully did that. Similar thing on the same lines we have done in our Chandrayaan-3 also, when our propulsion module took our Vikram lander into the lunar orbit. Now, this time, the things got tricky because now we are going to orbit around a point which doesn't contain any mass, any celestial object. When we have to go around any celestial object in an orbit, then things become a bit easier for us. But the point L1 that we are talking about, so let's understand this. Say, uh, uh, if I let, I, I'll go back a bit and I'll show you. Uh, this is, let's say this is sun and uh, this is earth and L1 point is somewhere here at this point. Now, this whole stuff is moving. This whole stuff is moving like this. So that point is also moving. And our Aditya is going to orbit around this point. It is going to orbit this point. Now, you can imagine the situation, what's going to happen. So once we reach in the halo orbit around the L1 point, it's not just like that we are just going to stay there. We are going to move on that line, the line that connects sun to earth. The L1 point lies on that line. And that whole thing is rotating. The frame is mm. rotating. And our Aditya is going to go around that point in this particular way. The most peculiar aspect of this whole thing okay. is on 6th of January, liquid apogee motors, they will be fired. They will be fired for a well-calculated duration. But for carrying out everything in a picture-perfect manner, ISRO was expected. And they did it in a very fantastic way. They were expected to develop a whole new software. A software that has to calculate the orbital locations, the positions, calculate the orbital dynamics, and everything. We should know where we were, where we are right now, and where Aditya will be in the future. That's how we do the calculations. So for that, we have you know, put in application of some good, well-proven mathematical models that have been used previously also for the missions that have reached that point, that are right now in the orbit around okay. the L1 point. So we have developed a new software, completely new, a robust Manish. one that has done all the calculations yeah. and that software is guiding the Aditya to the point where we are reaching first part. Second, 
on 6th of january okay. when we will be coming close to that point where we have to fire the liquid opposing motor now that will be the main climax of the thriller because liquid liquid opposing motor have been traveling with the aditya in such a cold space and they have to wake up so uh, that parts become bit tricky because they have to wake up they have to fire they have to create the thrust of the particular calculated amount they have to burn for that particular calculated duration at the go we can't have it like you know uh, you might have seen that movie uh, mangalyaan just to refer to that mission mangal movie was there and there there was one discussion that you can uh, if you can recall where they talk about if we are not able to capture the gravity of the mars is not able to capture the mangal um, uh, mangalyaan then we are mm. going to get mm. somewhere um, you know on the different side of the mars and we may lose the mission the mission may get into some geopardy and we we face some perils of getting lost in the mm. space same thing is right now very crucial on 6th yeah. of january we have we have well calculated amount of duration for which we have to fire the engines our engines has to fire our liquid opposing motor 440 newton liquid opposing motor the same one that we have used on mangalyaan also it has to fire for the well calculated duration then that maneuver that maneuver will put the aditya satellite mm. in an orbit around nothing l1 point is a point and that point doesn't have any celestial object so effectively we have to put our aditya it's a you know nice dance of physics where sun will try to pull it towards itself earth will try to pull it towards itself and that pull will eventually make aditya go around that l1 point in a halo orbit now these halo orbits are also uh, little you know they are not just regular orbits why because they are three dimensional If yeah, we talk you know about that, that's orbits. what my next question was, Manish. In fact, a lot of complexities involved. Apologies for uh, you know intervening, but uh, that's what I wanted to ask you. We, we're talking about the halo orbit, uh, but what exactly is a halo orbit? Also, why is it so difficult to uh, sustain yourself in that halo orbit? Why is it so complex? What makes it so challenging? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, really challenging to maintain a spacecraft in the halo orbit because you know uh, we call L one as an equilibrium point between Sun and Earth, but then that equilibrium is unstable equilibrium. So you hmm. can imagine in such a way. Uh, uh, let's say we keep something on a hilltop. It's staying there, but then that equilibrium is hmm. not stable. A single push here and there, and that let's say we have put a pebble on a hilltop, then a single push here and there, it. the thing will roll down the other side down the gravity the same thing can happen in those orbits because these orbits are unstable they are in equilibrium there is a constant pull towards the other two sides but then it's an unstable situation a single miscalculation a single misfire or a single lapse can result in loss of the spacecraft that happened in 1998 soho soho the isa nasa collaborative project it was in a geopardy it faced that particular consequences when they failed to maintain the particular orbit they failed to keep keep the station there and then the communication was lost but then luckily the experts from both the sides from isa and nasa they were able to get the spacecraft back in, on the communication line and still that mission is still going around that particular orbit now let's talk about halo orbits so halo orbits are three dimensional they have x axis they have y axis and they have z axis and these are numbers are very big so uh, let's put in perspective recently uh, we have launched exposat and exposat was kept in an orbit that is around mm. 650 kilometers above the surface of the earth halo orbits are so big that from that point l1 their uh, measurements will be like 6 lakh kilometers in one direction let's say along the uh y axis it's 6 lakh kilometers along the x axis it is around 2 lakh kilometers along the z axis it is around 1 and 1/2 lakh kilometers so they are big and when a spacecraft is moving in on those convoluted orbits they are not perfectly circular they are convoluted they have distorted shape so when the spacecraft is going around the hl1 point in those convoluted orbits then the onboard thrusters gyros the magnetic torques reaction wheels they play a very important role now what are these things what are these gyros and reaction wheels and what is the role they play so uh, when we drive a two wheeler once the wheels set in motion 
then there is a physical quantity we call it angular mm. momentum something that is related to the rotational motion so once the wheels start rotating there the physics comes into play and that balances our two wheelers so when we are riding a two wheeler we simply take help of physics in balancing now that simple concept is used in balancing a spacecraft also so on spacecrafts we have very specialized mechanisms where when the onboard sensors detect that the spacecraft is not in the perfect orientation its orientation is changing the term that we use for that is attitude so we call it attitude and orbital control systems we control the attitude and orbit because if orbit is not controlled the spacecraft can go anywhere it may just simply you know vanish in the void of the space and if attitude is not proper mm. then a uh, misfiring of thruster can take it to any place now how we do that so our software the onboard software it will be doing continuous uh, you know corrections if something goes wrong and that has to be done every month now that is the minimum duration you can do it more frequently but it is must that you should do it every month so okay. the orbital period around the l1 point is around 178 days so around 178 days means around 6 months uh, we will be completing one orbit around the l1 point but every month we have to check whether our spacecraft is in the exact look now how we are going to find out whether we are in the same location exact location and we are at the right orientation so for that also yeah. the software the ground stations that data that we receive from the spacecraft they play a very important role so it's not just about reaching l1 and orbiting so, so around l1 so a lot l1. of precision it is, yeah it is it is more about staying there yeah. and be very precise else we may miss the sun you may miss the point yeah 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 a lot of precision that is required and extremely fascinating aspects involved to it and a lot of complexities uh, but i'm glad manish you're simplifying it uh, wonderfully for our viewers and for me as well uh, who perhaps don't understand the nitty gritties of what all is involved in the kind of uh, process that will be held uh, but also help us understand manish um, you know we're talking about this very scientifically and in terms of the technicalities but we know that aditya l1 is supposed to uh, understand and study the sun solar storms and how it's going to be impacting the earth uh, but once it reaches the l1 and the halo orbit in layman's terms what can we expect then once this the study starts is that going to be the start of the final research and study for which aditya l1 has been sent and then the whole process of studying the sun and the solar storms and all of that follows yeah yeah actually once we reach into the halo orbit around the l1 point then all the experimental payloads they will slowly they will be you know they will be booting up most of the payloads have already delivered some data on their way towards the l1 point but few payloads are such that will be uh, switched on at that particular moment when once we reach into that orbit so yes we can expect as soon as we reach there once the system check has been confirmed that we are in the right orientation the spacecraft is having all health checkups are perfectly fine as expected all the parameters are just as per the expectation once they have been confirmed then those payloads will start generating the information because those payloads will be looking at the sun 24/7 so we we are going to get huge amount of data the the scientific community will be overwhelmed with the data mm. that we are going to get from our payloads and and manish my last question to you this is going to take this whole process takes how much time what we'll see uh you know this this whole placing of uh, aditya l1 in the halo orbit this whole procedure takes uh an estimated what kind of time so uh let's say if you talk about our chandrayaan 3 then we use the term the 17 minutes of terror because those 17 crucial minutes were the time when yeah. our vikram lander was supposed to land on the southern polar region of the moon but here the situation will be even less than a minute we we have to fire our liquid apogee motors those liquid apogee motors lam we call it they will uh, you know it's it's like putting the brake putting the brake to the spacecraft so that the hypothetical the virtual mass that you are assuming that is there at l1 that creates kind of its own pull that will capture aditya to put it in perspective it's like uh, similar on those lines i have just talked about the mangalyaan so let's say a spacecraft we i'll take the example mm. of mangalyaan and let's let's take the example of chandrayaan 3 that is a better one because the whole world has witnessed our uh, chandrayaan 3 moment so when we started our journey on 14th of july 
we took multiple rounds around the earth and then we started our journey towards the moon and then we started moving towards the moon on i think 30th or 31st of july and then on 5th of august i think there was a tweet from isro that to the chandrayaan has been captured by the moon's gravity and we are in the lunar orbit now how we did that that is going to help us in explaining how we are going to do it now so we have moon moon has its own gravity and moon has the gravity has a limitation the limitation says if something is moving at a very fast pace and this gravity is not able to grab it not able to catch it then that particular thing whatever it is a spacecraft or any celestial object it will simply pass by we we'll, we can say it will fly by it will not be captured around the that particular celestial object now replace the moon with that l1 point and replace our chandrayaan with aditya so effectively that's why i'm saying it's our chandrayaan 3 moment only okay. so around the l1 point aditya has yeah. to cap get captured around the orbit uh, around the point at l1 point in the orbit around the l1 point but right now the speed with which okay. aditya is moving it has to be brought down it has to be hmm. uh, the brakes have to be applied such and that that everything is well calculated it is for a very it is for some seconds actually not for minutes it is for some seconds the engine will be fired okay. so that the aditya slows okay. down it gets captured in that particular orbit around the l1 point and then we will say that we have successfully have successfully achieved the aditya's l1 orbital insertion placed it okay all right we'll leave it there manish prohit thank you very much for joining us on the broadcast and simplifying for all of us what's going to be happening with that big moment that isro is expecting thank you very much thank you thank you all right let's move on and get you other